Okay, I hit the button. Lucas? I have hit the button. That's awesome. Welcome back to the OI podcast. We have taken a very long hiatus because uh, I didn't want to do it. And also the pandemic happened. This is episode 40? Didn't everyone start a podcast during the pandemic? See, that's the thing. I wanted to subvert expectations. We had a podcast. I cut it off when everyone else was starting podcasts because I'm a little hipstery bitch. Mainstream. Or, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't want to be mainstream, so I said, "Oh, everyone has a podcast. Uh, fuck podcasts. They suck." We're the anti-podcast. You don't get to listen. Yeah, it was mostly because uh, <laughs> in moving home and then having to do online school, I was like, "This sucks. I don't want to wake up on my usual Saturday mornings to to edit this podcast." And I said, "I don't really want to do it anymore." But now uh, I've noticed that the original point of this podcast, for me anyway, the original idea was we get together and we can talk because. Otherwise, we don't do it, which the only person who hasn't been doing it is me. <laughs> yeah, <I> am... <laughs> we talk to you the least. <laughs> I am so <laughs> overly fucking busy. So I, I, this is I this week I was like, all right, I need to do this again. Even though it's going to take me some time uh, out of my week to both record and edit it, I need to do it because I miss these guys and I never jump on Discord because whenever I think of jumping on Discord, it's like 1 a.m., when I'm like kind of winding down and you guys have already gone to bed because uh, yeah, <laughs> you guys are, are real people now, uh, which is sad, um, but also cool. Very sad. It sucks. Don't become real people. Life advice. I'm, I, I am a uh, at music school. So even when I become a real person, I'm not a real person, but then also uh, still in school. So my hours are ridiculous and my schedule is overly full i don't not i don't work a nine to five i don't get out at that time i last monday i was at a studio uh like working like for real money and i got out at 10 because the guy i'm working for his name's benny and he was just like training me uh to be able to edit drums and stuff to be like an assistant of his um but yeah i i've been very busy so this is my time this is my time to be here. I would say last Thursday I worked 11 hours, so I know how it goes. I was in the plant from 7.30 to 6, and then I went to the gym and then got home and worked another like hour. So since the last episode of that came out, which actually there is a lost episode because there's one that we recorded and then the pandemic happened and I never posted it. So technically there's an, there's a, there's an episode 40 that will never see the light of day. Um, so this is it's for the over. Patreon. If you dox Max's computer and hack into his own f- system, you can be the first to access it. So uh, that's a that's a task for everyone at back at home to do. Uh, but I suppose what we should do is we should say our names like we use, usually did. I'm Max. I'm Donnie, otherwise known as Noah, otherwise known as the Flamingo, the Hot Soup. We've never called you the Hot Soup. We do now. I guess we do now. I'm Gary, the Hot Soup. I'm Lucas. Uh, I'm and that's all. No, take that's your all. Time. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> take your time. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Use your words. Uh, no. He couldn't come up with anything funny to say. He's, he's panicking. Andy, you yeah. don't have to make a joke. You can just say you're Andy. No, well, no, no. The I bit was that he never, he said, never his said his name. name. Oh, that's right. No, that was <laughs> the bit. <laughs> Max, start it over. Start it over. I can't. I'm half, half joking, no. half not joking. Yeah. Um, so since since the last time this happened, uh, a lot has happened, a.k.a. Uh, like two years. Um, yeah, but, I moved across the country two more times. <laughs> yeah, you moved and you're working in, uh, where are you fucking, what state are you in? We should all just say in? What, we've, what we've done. I live in Milwaukee now. One. Milwaukee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I live give, in Wisconsin. Give an update. <laughs> um, I graduated college like a couple months ago. Then moved to Wisconsin. Um. And now I'm here. <laughs> it's kind of I moved because I think the last podcast we did was when I lived in Connecticut. Yep. And I moved back from Connecticut to New Hampshire, and then back to upstate New York for college to finish that. And now I live in Milwaukee. And you know I'm an hour behind everyone, so as they say, I'm living in the past. As one of us says. Uh, guys, we should probably let Donnie know that in like 14 minutes it's going to be nine o'clock. Nine p.m. <laughs> Yeah, just like bedtime. Know. Lucas, what's 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 your what's your update since episode four? I graduated 40? from college uh, about a year and a few months ago, which feels jarring to say because it keeps feeling it's been a few months. 
and I have worked for the government. I've been one of those, except it's been the cool part of the government that picks up 10-foot logs and gets really tired and sore afterwards. And then that was for like a few months during the summer. I worked with the uh, Forest Service for a little bit. I'm still back home. I'm still, I'm still around New Hampshire and everything. But it's been a, uh, been exploring some of the mo the mountain range and everything with that. And currently, I'm at a service position job, in Maine, where I'm doing a bunch of urban environmental stuff. It's been very different, and I'm still figuring out whether it's a fit for me. But I've really enjoyed the position just because of the outlook on urban environmental stuff instead of being in the literal like outdoors whatever three mile hike into the woods environment but it's also been fun because i've been helping with like some community event stuff like i helped with organizing a 5k and some like a did you get the bagels stuff. i got well i'd i'd communicated with panera to get panera bread so but i think i got some of the bagels or some leftover bread as as is tradition, um, as is tradition. and then i uh, i've been helping a bunch of uh helping with a bunch of like K through 12 uh, schools for some water quality like stuff and some gardening tips for them and everything which has been really fun. It's been really fun because it's a lot of those a lot of those kids they do not go outside and they're also like at, at that stage where they don't have a filter but are also aware of their surroundings so if they really care about something it's because they really care. You've told us about some awesome kids that you've met like the dinosaur kid that was rad yeah yeah I'll, I'll go into some of those in a bit but I'll let some of you guys go around but I, i've been i've been doing stuff i'm figuring myself out and i'm i'm, I'm getting i'm getting some form of work in I'm are you commuting resume. in maine or do you have a place yes and i timed it perfectly with the gas rising horribly <laughs> i have seen it real time <laughs> go from like 350 to five dollars and we will not go into the specifics of that but that has been just <laughs> that has been an experience of like I have had to tactically, like, choose, okay, am I going to go to the one that's, like, 20 minutes from home? Am I going to go to the one that's, like, five minutes away from work? And so they have to fluctuate, even if it's, like, sent differences. Do you know, do you know who did that? <sighs> Joe Budden. It's our, it's our guy, Brandon. Yo. Our okay, can I, tell, Brandon. can I tell a Let's Go Brandon story? <laughs> After Andy talks. Wait, who's that? Uh, I don't have a uh, name, remember? Right? Um, I can <laughs> You have a name, you just don't say it. I just don't say it. We could solve, We could just call you Shimpy. <laughs> like Voldemort. <laughs> if you say my name, I'll just show up at your house. <laughs> if we bloody say Mary, Andy's bloody name Mary, bloody 17 Mary. 17 times, he shows up in your mirror. <laughs> <laughs> show up in your dreams, you don't want that. Yeah, I do. Uh, You're already there. Yeah, I'm already there all the time. Aw, oh, thanks, babe. Babe. Aw. <laughs> Honey. Kitten. Sweetums. We're in public. Muffin. Anyway, Andy, talk. <laughs> Before we start, I'll start getting hot and bothered. Shmoopy. Oh, is that what you do on a podcast? You talk? Uh, yeah, I got a job working remote. You got two degrees. I got two degrees. Kind of, but yeah, I got two degrees. Well, you got... You you you, you gained a, a master's and a bachelor's at the same time, right? Yeah, technically I'm still in RIT since I'm working on finishing my thesis. Oh, okay. But like, I've I've graduated. Grad. I'm like, I'm never taking classes again. Right. So it's I guess just you need to you need to finish up the you need to, you need to tie up some loose ends and button some buttons and then you're official. But you walked and everything. Yeah, I walked. Didn't you? So we could run. I'm still uh, at the College of Music known as Berkeley, not the one in California. Um, and I two E's, no Y. It, it it has been a lot of fun, a lot of stress, and I I work a lot either practicing but not my instrument, or going to studios and working on projects for that. I'm also uh, I was super super fortunate to stumble upon two professors last semester that I now uh, kind of work with. Uh, one of them has been. Very nice uh, in giving me some freelance sessions that were kind of overflow. And since I'm like a junior engineer, it's uh, cheaper for me to do it than for him to do it because he's been doing it for 20 years. So he has some clients that will call him up and go, hey, I want to do the studio session. And then he says the price and they're like, "Ooh, is there any way we can do it cheaper? And I'm the way they can do it cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> You're the budget option. So I'm the budget option, which I mean, work. honestly... Uh, not to toot my own horn, but also definitely toot my own horn. I'm pretty competent 
even though I'd I'm I'm, I'm, I'm right. not uh, done with my Berkeley career yet. Like compared to some of my peers, I feel like I'm I'm doing pretty well for myself, uh, and I was very fortunate to do that. And it really all fell in because I was taking this one class with a professor, and he immediately noticed he, he was new this semester and or this past spring and i knew the console already so he was like i'm gonna be kind of learning this guy learning this with you like i know signal flow i know what's i know what's up i know how to record stuff but as far as this console goes i might stumble a, a few times so uh you know bear with me and but immediately i was like all right this is this is my time to shine because i know this thing fucking inside and out and i know my classmates don't really yet um so I was basically his assistant in that class because a lot of times he would be trying to do something and then I would just stand up uh, behind the console and just kind of get it done in, in a few moves. And then a few times when I would do that, he would then go, can you explain what you just did to the class so everybody can learn? And I'm like, yeah, sure. So I like actually a lot of times would explain things to the class because I already knew how to do them on that specific console, which was a very fun thing because then, you know, he would be explaining something, but then somebody would like, shuffle back uh over to me like standing in the corner and be like hey can you explain that one thing again and i was like yeah sure of course so he saw that and then uh one day after class uh which i was actually i wanted to ask him if i could come sit in on some sessions because he's an active engineer in boston and he's he's bouncing around different places and i wanted to ask him if he needed like kind of an assistant like intern type of thing but he actually asked me he goes hey man you, I think you would make a great assistant engineer, like already, like which is really impressive because you're only third semester MP and E. Uh, do you want to come by this studio this weekend and like help out? And I was like, absolutely. I ran to my next class that I had my, with my roommate Kevin, and I was like, I was vibrating. I was like so excited. And then I was sitting on a washing machine. <laughs> I was, it was I was like sitting on a washing machine. I had a phone in every pocket, and they called all of them. They had the same phone number. And it wasn't like an iPhone. It was like a Nokia phone that like yeah. would vibrate themselves off tables and break the table before. Oh they yeah, break. those are the best. Yeah. Uh, so I, and it turned out it was at the studio of another professor that I had. And then so they talked. They've known each other for many years. And then the professor who owns the studio was like, "Hey, I need somebody to come in. I heard you like you kind of you got your bearings at my studio. Like, do you want to come in and do this? You like you seem." like this other guy's talking really high, highly of you. So then that got me in the door there and he's been super helpful in the kind of the freelance side of things. And then the other guy is, has been, uh, I've been assisting him and he's been throwing me some, some money, which is nice. Um, that and also working on campus in live sound. So I am all over the place, very busy all the time. Anyway, let's go Brandon's story. Let's go. All right. So now that Max is done sucking his own wiener on microphone, <laughs> um, so I was at a Bills game on Halloween this year, and as you know, NFL will attract some people of the um, right-wing community more often than not, and I'm standing there in the bleachers just having a great time with my buddies, sitting next to my friend who happens to be named Brandon, and at one point, one of the guys behind us goes, yo guys, we gotta get a Let's Go Brandon chant started, and this is right after it happened, so I was not aware of what let's go brandon meant and so me, me and my buddy look at each other we're like yeah let's go brandon and i started pointing at him and then we, like we went to the bathroom like 15 minutes later and i looked up what let's go brandon meant and immediately never said it again there is a chance someone recorded part of that and they could unearth that and you would never have a job again no that's not true because he that's would just go true. i was standing next to a guy named brandon and i thought it was ironically funny yeah it was very <laughs> ironic because i'm like oh is there like some like random person in the buffalo community named brandon and then yeah that's you awesome got abducted into a right-wing cult was that was was that like right after like it actually yeah it was like the same the NASCAR week race was it nascar no it was it, indycar right no it was nascar it was nascar racing mm-hmm. yeah it was nascar racing. it was the same week that it happened um i'm pretty sure because i had never heard it before and since then, I've now seen people's trucks with decals on the tailgate of it that say, let's go, Brandon, to which I say, wow, that guy's not even president anymore. That community took to that so fast. Like, they were just like, oh, yeah, this is the funniest goddamn thing in the world. Let's keep saying it forever. And I was, and Imagine I just, just like it's not so being weird. a little bitch and just saying it. If you want to say fuck Joe Biden, like, just chant that, which like they were yeah. at the NASCAR race. But then the just the reporter I don't know. It was like you a misheard mystery. it. It was so silly. So silly. yeah, because they thought, yeah. yeah. Um, 
yeah that's that's really funny and also standing next to someone named brandon yeah makes that like so sweet if that i would not have funny. reacted in a positive manner if i didn't like already know like you know, if you knew the context me... of it yeah yeah or if i wasn't sitting next to someone named brandon <laughs> you would have just been confused and just looking around going why are people doing this who is yeah. named brandon, brandon on this team? what did you do yeah who is brandon who, who is, is brandon, brandon? <laughs> <laughs> where my brandon where yeah. he brandon yeah you branded branded the mark of the the mark of the center the branded there's a restaurant the, by yeah. me called the branded steer Okay, the, uh, my audio is going to sound so funny because in the background, all I can hear is my server fans ramping up and down every single time the Factorio server saves every 10 minutes. So that's going to be that's going to be a fun that's time fine. to listen to. I'll, I'll get I don't think it's it. actually going to like, it's not loud. It's not like it might not get into it and also, I'll just, I, can, I can fix. It's okay. It's, it's funny because I can tell when there's people logged into the server because I'll be sitting in my room working and I hear the fans ramp up to max for like 20 seconds and go back down. I'm like, oh, someone's on the server. <laughs> so you're you're running a 24-7 Factorio's server? Yeah. Yeah, on the, yeah, on the new uh, Minecraft server hardware. So how um, did you... Which is an Alienware. Of course, Alienware. You're running it on a console? That's crazy. What? It's freaking huge, oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it took me a second to get that, too. I yeah I think before I move I think I want to attempt to get a smaller case <laughs> that doesn't have forty pounds worth of RGB lighting in it. It, it actually keeps me up at night. I can't turn it <laughs> off, and it's it flashes all night. And it only has one fan. It only has one fan. Uh, yeah, that's not great. That's why I want to get another case. I want to get a small case that has I can put a few more a few more fans. I have in. always. I've always avoided RGB stuff and kept my lights on even late at night for that exact reason. Because if I turn into a guy who always has just multicolored lights on and everything, it's going to then keep me up at night. and I'm not going to be able to see reality anymore. That's, I have a dock. That's, that's just how it's going to happen for me. I have a dock on my desk from OWC that has like a blue light of their logo on the top of it. And when I first set it up, like the first night I was sleeping in here in Boston, it was just glowing blue. And I was like, I cannot deal with that. So I had to put... Uh, I keep my mouse on top of it. I don't. <laughs> so I mostly, I mostly either use my trackball or my trackpad like next to my keyboard, but I have a mouse on my desk just in case. And it's also connected to my windows PC if I ever use that. But so it's just sitting on top of that. And then most recently I got a new hard drive. So now it's a hard drive on top of the dock to block the light. And then my mouse is sitting on there. But then the second night I slept here, I, plugged in my iLock, which is the little key thing that allows me to use Pro Tools. And that has a little blue LED to make sure that it's connected. Um, and that was blaring me. And that was even more directional. Like the blue light just glowing on the wall was annoying for me. But this one is a light that comes out of a pinhole on the top of a USB Those stick. things are so bright. Oh, so it's just hyper concentrated like a laser. Yeah, I felt like it was a goddamn laser beam into my face when I was sleeping. And I, I don't even know, like, the layout of my room is that my feet are towards the light, but I felt like it was still hitting me in the eyeball. So uh, what I did was I made a tiny, tiny piece of tape, and I just put it over the light. Uh, <laughs> and if I need to see that it has a light, I can kind of see it bleeding through, but it's not fucking blinding, which is good. Andy, can you explain what Factorio is to me? Okay. <laughs> all right, so, here we go. The rest right. of the podcast. All right, here we go. All, all right. right. Turn, all right, Lucas all right, and I, time, time to take a nap. Ten minutes. Time to, to, time to stream. Me, 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 me. Um, okay, so, so basically it's a to, it's a top-down game, and you're in this... There's not really much of a story. It's just you're in a spaceship, and you land on a planet, um, and your goal is to launch rockets to get off the planet, which means, you know, you create a factory to make all the parts and stuff. But... uh. As you do it, everything you do creates pollution, and the natives, which are, like, giant bugs, get mad at your pollution and come try to, like, beat the shit out of you. So there's enemies? It's not just, like, a grind game? Yeah, 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 there's enemies. And you can play in, like, hardcore mode where they are absolutely impossible. Okay, so it's not like a cookie, it's not like a cookie clicker where you put more in-depth, it's more of, like, an actual kind of thing where you try, you're trying to accomplish a goal. It's a video game. Yeah, yeah, and the thing is, that's cool about it, is there's like a billion ways to do it, 
And the game is written super, super efficiently. So people do like mega bases where you're producing like thousands of items a second just because you can. Like you don't have to. Like you can beat the game. Um, like there's a speeder. There's a speedering achievement for beating the game in eight hours. And so you can beat the game in eight hours. The record's like five, I think. You can beat the game in like yeah five eight hours if you really try. But people will put hundreds and hundreds of hours onto one save just because you can keep building it bigger and bigger and bigger. So you are so you could beat the game in in a, in a reasonable amount of time, but then you guys are now in cookie clicker mode where you're just watching numbers go well, up. And so then here's the thing: so factory. the game was it's not even numbers. <laughs> yeah. So the game was made with modding in mind. So they actually like they built a modding API into the game. All good games are. Yeah, like all games are. So we have a mod now called Space Exploration. So the way it works is once you beat Base Factorio, like you launch your missile, it adds planets. So you can explore all the other planets. You can build in space. So basically, once you beat the base game, so you can kind of restart adds on another planet. F- Ten new base games worth of content on top of it. That's cool. And I, I does it add like different um, like elements? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Cool. So it's yeah. So like. It added, like, originally there's, for a bunch of there's three tiers of items, generally. This added, like, five more tiers on top of that. It's so nuts. The amount of content added is crazy. It, yeah, it's it's an incredible game how, like, moddable it is. Cause, and there's one where, instead of actually playing and building a factory, you're basically Wally exploring the planet and trying to, like, clean it up after the people leave like so is that your origin like it was the ad- idea of that it was like you fled that planet to the other planet and now you're going back and cleaning it yeah except you're not a human like instead you're actually playing as a robot oh you're so you're literally wally yeah you're like you're literally just a robot Ooh, mom's like, home the cleanup like it's it's very very cool that was dead he just got back from that, that was dead. yeah the grand <laughs> yeah that that happened a giant hotel half burned down in our town yeah. 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 i got to check that out that was uh that was not a, my town that was crazy yeah, those, those pictures you sent were nuts yeah that was crazy it was still the talk of the town when i was on the phone with people like two weeks later it's crazy yeah I, I went home for a weekend a few weeks after it happened and and when, when, when me and my mom were getting close to our house which is like right down the road uh she was like, "Do you want to go to see go see the uh, go see the hotel?" And I was like, "Yes, absolutely." Fire fun, so yeah. We went, and it was the weirdest sight in the world because you know it's up on this big hill. I look up, and it's just half of the building that's been there for my whole life is just not there. And it was the it was the weirdest sensation ever. I really wonder what they're gonna do. The way the wreckage looked from the pictures you sent, it looked like it had been like that for like a year or something. I said that in the chat before. It's just because of the deterioration of the fire and everything. It's just it was so crazy. old too. Like I that stuff just it, yeah. goes up in flames instantly. Yeah, well, it was yeah. it was crazy because yeah, the entire like lobby area is all just torn down to the studs. Like yeah. it's actually just gone. But it's weird because the other wing, the north wing, is completely intact. Like if you open those doors, it's like it was stuck in time. Like some of the lights huh. are still on. Like, it is super creepy. Yeah, because it, it didn't get through the center section, so like that that side's fine. But there was yeah, water and smoke damage weird. in the. Did you get to like the the big dining hall with like the observation deck and stuff? How's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went, yeah, I went up to the top of the observation. There's actually the observation deck is black. All the windows are black, <sighs> and the all the woods smoke. black from smoke damage. Yeah, Jeez. that's crazy. Because that's a it's beautiful crazy. room crazy yeah well yeah all that's torn down it's all it all of us down to the studs the entire center building that's insane. it's like you can actually get into where the old pool and hot tub was because the walls torn down (laughs) is the water park is 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 any of it still open yeah apparently apparently they're keeping the water park open i mean why wouldn't they right i mean yeah it's it's in fine condition um so what they did i they actually shut it down for just the spring cleaning which actually was supposed to be like a week after the fire anyway so i guess they just shut it down and but yeah they're I, it seems like they're gonna keep it open because i mean why not <laughs> they have to fund the renovation somehow right? yeah if it's if that part's a part of it is good and as long as you keep people away from the wreckage because like that could be unsafe 
Yeah, yeah, they got the doors like locked, and they could honestly just build some a oh, fucking wall there in the meantime. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Put up a yeah. put up one of those construction site temporary fences just to stop people from getting to the south wing to like get hurt. Because <laughs> then, because then that's a whole legal thing. Just quick thing, my friend just touched down in. Uh, California he's visiting for the weekend to go to a rave and the first text he sends us not hey I landed safely is it's hot it's hot it do be hot that's in like California. me that's me when I got off the plane in Orlando I was like wow this is warm <laughs> it is wet <laughs> I am moist every time I get moist. off a plane in in Florida that's the first thing I think is just like oh it's thicker here uh, it it does. Yeah. The air feels so the thick. The air is heavy. It's like walking through milk. Mm. It is. <laughs> and right after it rains, you can feel the weight. Like, it just feels so yeah, heavy. It's, it's so weird. Oh. Um. So, I don't know the exact year, but um, where the community center is, uh, both well, kind of partly where the new building is, but mostly where the playground is. There was a huge hotel there uh it was called the, the kearsarge inn i think and yep. that thing when you see pictures of it it is fucking monstrous it's like one of the biggest things ever i've ever seen like it is a huge your own building two eyes? to be there no, well uh, just on old black and white photos there's a few photos that you can find of it online are actually um uh stereophonic pictures i think that's what they're called uh, yeah, so it yeah. was it was a dual element like film camera that would make a 3d image back in the day oh, yep and there's a few of those that you can find um oh yep yeah i haven't seen them in 3d because i don't have the capabilities to to do that but it's like you see the side by side and it's like oh it's the same picture but two inches apart anyway that place was massive and it burned down and i remember learning about that and having my mind blown going wow such a big place that like so many people stayed at and everything like just burned down but then i asked my mom about it and she was like oh yeah there's also like a few others that have burned down over the years and i remember thinking as a kid like i don't think that's gonna happen i sure hope that doesn't happen that will never happen spit cereal the thing back then they didn't have as robust of like a firefighting thing which by the way like it did happen. Which this hotel did not have that fully equipped. Let's be clear about that. Yeah, no. This, <laughs> yes, those sections were still old. They were grandfathered two. in. Yeah. This one was just, it was very old as well. So it didn't have like the fire suppression systems. But but what I was thinking was just the fire department, which they, if the fire department was probably what it was when the Kearsarge Inn burned down, then that whole building would be gone. Guaranteed. Um, I just like no question in my mind. Because like a huge hotel like that, that's that, that's that that is that old is just going to go up like Kindle. I'm, I'm glad that only one wing was really fully destroyed, but it's absolute insanity. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, I, I mean, my house caught on fire back in the day. If you guys really, yeah, my, the farm, yeah, I don't know if you, I think farm. you probably have never been up to the attic there, Lucas, but yeah, it's all charred. Yeah. It, it's so creepy that the, the, all the braces are still charred. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. I've only been up to your house once for the spag dinner, I think, one time, yeah. So it it caught on fire, like, years and years and years ago. And, like, I think the original, original house burned, like, the bulk of it, but then they rebuilt it. But it's crazy. Fires are insane. But the attic still has has char marks? Yeah. No, if you go up there, it's... I think because there was another fire in there. Oh, Oh, okay. I was going to say, if it was rebuilt, then... Yeah, because if it was rebuilt, I was like, I feel like the roof would be one of the first things to have to be redone. It's you know? a phantom fire. It's a scar. It doesn't go away. It's always there. Phantom fire. You. That sounds like something from Binding of Isaac. That's a. It sounds like a book for young adults. That's like not. That's like <laughs> sounds a, like a James that's Bond. That's like a seventeenth sequel to like the Hunger Games or something. Yeah, yeah it's the Phantom well, Fire. Oh, what was what was the book series that was James Bond, but he was a teenager? Alex yes. Ryder. Yeah, yeah, like Silverfin. Um... The Alex Ryder books. I The only one I remember was he was undercover at Wimbledon. And he was like, a, I, he was a mm. ball boy. I yeah. don't, I'd never read any of those. What was uh, it? Yeah, Young Bond. Uh, yeah, I think it was by Charlie Alex Higson. Ryder. Is that the one you're thinking? Alex Ryder. No, Alex Ryder. It's called Alex Ryder. Ryder with a Y. 
No, he, oh, he, he's like he's like a young Bond, but he isn't a literal young Bond. He's not literally oh. young Bond. He's just. Oh, he's I like, thought you were actually talking about the young Bond books. No, okay. no, oh, those I didn't even know those. Too. I didn't yeah. know. No, it's writer with an I actually. Oh, it's writer with an I. Okay. Well, yeah, I never learned British to too. Anyway. British. Yeah. British. He's British. I saw a British woman earlier actually. He's a British person. Air what did you do to her? British. That license I plate you saw did. the other day, the Brit-ish. That was so, that was British. so cool. That was so funny. I'm, I was sent into a blinding rage. That guy's a... Honestly, I was, I was pissed. I could, have, like a, I could have beaten that car death. I would like have punched a bull in the windshield. I'm like a bull that saw red. Everyone's yeah, lucky dude, they were I would, I would have cut, taken the license plates off the car and used them to slash the tires if it I saw that. It everything for me to not put it all, on, all in the gas and just let, let myself hit whatever like, I was going to the fill their tailpipe with fireworks. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but that would have been cool. I know it would have been cool because British people would have been mortally wounded. People, of course, in air quotes. Well, yeah, that's implied. I'm, you, you can't you can't hear parentheses in my voice. British people. That's why I'm gonna start doing that, the quote unquote thing. Yeah. Because you sound like an ass. Like when people do that, you sound like an asshole. But it's also yeah, funny. quote unquote British. Yeah, quote unquote British people. It's not like they can't see you doing the motion with your hand either. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got to telegraph for the blind people in the audience. Or when you're on like a conference call at work. Or if you're on a conference call. Exactly. Which the one the one department of people, I won't say department, like the one like function of people at work that always like to have their cameras on are people in marketing. Don't know why mm. they love to have their cameras on. Yeah, they're definitely they're big person to person people. Mm-hmm. Dude, I hate it. I got asked to tell a story as to why we're changing to a new component i'll say because i can't really talk about what i do i said your boss is gonna find this and he's just gonna be like okay we're gonna have to have a talk about your uh, your thoughts on marketing <laughs> you had to tell no 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 he no i i talked to him about it today he agreed with me but they're oh, like okay. let's tell a story about this i'm like dude and i'm like thinking the entire time like marketing drove this decision they just told us hey we need to save money and change to a new design and we said okay <laughs> i'm like i like because i'm like i don't care i'm just a technical guy like yeah, i just need numbers and data your thing that's what I'm saying, because I need to push something through to higher ups right now and say like, hey, like, this is the way it is. If you don't accept this as it is, um, you don't have a product. <laughs> and so the yeah, one like, of the guys in marketing was just trying to talk to me and be like, hey, like, we just want to be prepared in case someone Well, just be prepared in case someone says no. Gotcha. Because it can't just be a thing where you say here is the redesign, it saves us this amount of money, or, like, here is the process that we were doing. Like, you can't lay it out in a mm, analytical way. You, yeah, like, no, it's people like, don't gotta, like looking at numbers. You gotta be a little bit fluffy with it, so then the people who sign checks are like, oh, that sounds cool. It's not even the people who sign checks, it's just the people who make decisions. Right. Yeah, just Because I am, I am a grunt, I'm a wage cuck. <laughs> wage I'm a part cuck. of the system. Yeah, I, I I am a part of I'm the system cog, that is inherently I'm a cog broken. In the machine. Oh, I'm another <laughs> brick in the wall. And then guess what? There's no oil on me. <laughs> There's no oil. I'm, I'm all just rusted. a raw dog cog. This might be a stupid question, but are you paid hourly or do you have a salary? I'm salaried. Okay, I but it's funny because when I go into like my payment information at work, it tells me my hourly wage, huh. and it's like some like oddly specific number. <laughs> well, I assume. What? No, you probably don't even input hours at that case. Cause like, no, I just show up. If you were to input hours and be salaried, then it would tell you what your hourly rate for the week is. Yeah. Because but for for me, for some projects, you know, like you you think it's gonna take X amount of hours, so then you charge for that. But then it might end up taking you longer, so then your hourly rate just like starts dwindling down and down and down. Which right. so I have a plugin. I need to add it to my templates. I might do that tonight, but I have a plugin that counts how much time I am in a pro tool session. So the way that I described it to Kevin, when I asked if something like this existed was I said, you know, when you're playing Minecraft and then you go into the things and then you see like how many, how much time you spent in the world. And it's kind of sad. Mm -hmm. Uh, He was like, Oh, I got the thing for you. And it's literally like a stopwatch you put on a channel and it just starts counting. If the session's open, it just starts counting. And uh, earlier this week, I saw a professor had it in a session, which I this professor brought uh, uh, this professor Kevin had in the past. So I assume that's where he learned about it. And I asked him, I was like, how much 
what's like what's the clock at you know and he goes oh yeah this one actually took less time than i expected which was good and it was like five hours or something like that and um he goes sometimes this is scary though because then the whole class was like oh what is that um so then he had to explain it and he goes it's kind of scary sometimes because you might not realize what you've done in it and then you realize oh i should have charged more than this because the number is really high you know oh i spent 13 hours in this session trying to finish this like six minute song and you realize oh maybe i should have upped this because you know when you're looking at something like that giving numbers for mix engineering work is such a weird thing it's just like what are people gonna pay and then also how long is it going to take you because you might charge x amount for a song but then one song is going to take you two hours to finish because it's like some jazz thing and you just clean it up and then you're done or it might be some pop tune where it takes you a few hours across multiple days if you kind of leave and come back so it's just like it's it's really weird thing that's why ideally i would want to have a a system where I would be getting paid an amount for working at a place, and then whatever I get done is just, like, additive, which there's some places... Yeah, you get Boston. a base salary plus more or less commission. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's not it's not exactly commission, but... Yeah. Yeah, it's like, if you do more that week, and you, like, cross a threshold, then you get more money, which is how um some post-production places work, which there's a lot of money in post I learned today that there is a company who gives unique identifiers to like um, commercials and I think TV shows and even corporate videos like internal videos. And they'll on the if the, the video editor will put a slate at the beginning of it and it'll have a unique identifying number. There is a company that gives out that unique identifying number and holds a database and to generate a unique code for that project is $35. What? So arbitrary. What? So that... I mean, I guess because it's taking up space in their database. But it's $35 per unique code. And think about how many... How many many fucking commercials... heart and soul. ...exist, right? So some guy... More than most. I'm just thinking of the corporate videos. I've probably seen a hundred of those, and I've only worked like a few jobs in my life. Right. So imagine if you were the guy who started that. You just you just have a hard drive, and it just says this thing is linked to this number, and you just generate new numbers and send them to people, and you probably do you know a thousand of those a day, and then you're charging thirty five dollars per number. It's nothing, and you're just you're just printing money. You're literally just printing money. Which is that sounds insane. fantastic. That's nuts. Well, uh, so. you, you talk about like time allocation. We do. We have a thing called it's like our can. We call it like our can we tool, and you go and you input like how much each project you're all your resource to, and then like how much time it's supposed to take you. And like ideally, you're supposed to be out of a, you know a total of one, and like most people average like one point two five. So like one hundred twenty five percent of your time of a workday is spent doing this mm-hmm. total. And I have one project right now that's just supposed to take up forty percent of my time, and that's like a conservative estimate. I uh, I was I sat in on a, on a Zoom interview with somebody who works. He's now a, a staff engineer at Henson Recording Studios in uh, in California, and he said when he was working as a runner, which is sort a little bit synonymous with an intern, but runners internships are sometimes not paid. Runners are always like a paid position, and he said that he would end up working upwards of like 200 hour weeks some weeks but he would be getting overtime like crazy yeah i don't get overtime um so like i said i worked 11 hours on thursday yeah so it's like it's it's like pretty crazy it's like that's like super long days that's like just waking up and you just like live at the studio and you just like you just don't leave because there there was probably a a big a-list celebrity there that week and they just needed to get a lot done and he was just like you know, the chicken with his head cut off, just doing everything that needed to be done, which is interesting. Yeah, and he probably slept in till noon the next week. <laughs> right, exactly. They, he said, they try to give us at least one day off a week, but, you know, sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. Which, like, this is, like, a super successful, world-renowned recording studio, so, like, there's a lot of 
like this guy just got a credit on the new Harry Styles album. So no way. So that's pretty cool. And he's he's a Berkeley graduate from 2019, which is really cool. Well, you talk about our stuff too. Um, Andy might know about this, but one thing that's really cool when you youngins get into corporate America is a lot of companies do summer hours. So between Memorial Day and Labor Day, you work nine hours Monday through Thursday. But then on Friday, you only work four hours. Oh, wow. So you go you go home at noon, and it's awesome. It, it, it's really nice because I normally work close to nine hours anyway. But this way, I can just have an excuse to leave after a half day on Fridays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mine's just, um, I mean, I'm not 100% sure. But mine, from what it seems like when I was talking to people, it's basically just work 40 hours a week, however you get it done, and just do your do whatever tasks you're assigned, and you're good to go. That's what it sounds like. That's usually how it's been for mine. Is well, the position I have is kind of unique, where we have to fill in. It's less of a conventional job and more of a just AmeriCorps service position, where we have to fill in seventeen hundred hours. And right now, I've got a good chunk of them, but there will be like some points where I have to like put in my time and like budget it and everything. And then I'm normally yeah serving that like forty or so hours a week, but then I can put in like extra time either for, like, other weekend events or um, additional days for, like, other events or whatever. As, an, as long as I'm meeting that, like, that 1700s amount by some, like, certain date or whatever, I'm, hmm. I'm fine. It, but it's it's just keeping that stuff on track, which has been, it's been weird because there have been, like, some times where I have to report, like, days will be off, but I haven't been doing some of that because I've just figured I have already, like, I've already taken some time and served, like, over time helping with uh something else or like helping with something on the weekend so i have those hours banked up and i just figure like you know i need to leave like 45 minutes earlier i have nothing going on right now and i'm tired and everything else but it's uh yeah i I don't know i I don't i don't mind the usual work week with stuff i i really really enjoyed the 410 schedule that i had before when i was with the uh when i was with the forest service i mean granted they had the 410s mostly because they weren't it was more for our own safety, for not pushing ourselves like too often during the week. The Friday was more of a day where we could not pick things up and put them down and be and feel our back. It was more as what it was, but it was mm. it was still it was the, those extra two hours do not really feel like anything if you're not too far away from where it is. I was only 15 minutes away from there, which was nice, so it wasn't like too too bad. So I would still only have like an extra half hour in the day and only be like. Ten and a half hours or so, and then I get an entire other day and start my Friday early, which is nice. It's been really, it's been kind of funny. I um realizing over time the 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 more difficult a job has been, like the closer it's been to me, and like or like more labor intensive, and then like vice versa if it's been less labor intensive. This this office position I have is like is an hour commute. And it's been mostly like office office stuff that I've had to do, and then some community engagement stuff, but like much lower maintenance if we're doing stuff outside. And meanwhile, the like retail stuff I've had before has been like a half hour, which is also like not nearly as intense as intense mentally and stuff to like micromanage and stuff. But there were also points of downtime where it wasn't always back and forth. And then the Forest Service, and then also during this winter, I uh, I worked briefly at a, a tubing hill just to make some extra money. And that's literally five minutes down the road from where I am, the ski resort that's right there. And both of those have been fucking back-breaking stuff. It's been, like, at least at least nine to ten hours of stuff, like, frequently and everything. So it's been, I don't know, it's just been funny. The like, further you I travel, think, the less calories you burn. The, the further, yeah, yeah, exactly. If there's something that's right next to my house, I'm going to be, like, jacked within a month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lucas. Guess you get a job in California, nice and relaxing. I got, yeah, I got it. Yeah, <laughs> and then turn it to five hundred. Yeah, you gotta commute yeah. every day, Lucas, to California. To California, yeah. <laughs> and that's I, how you become. You look like the people from Wally. If I work remote, I'm going to turn into the captain from Wally. Yeah, I well, need to be. That well, no, no. If you're gonna work remote, you're gonna be so ripped. You're gonna be the Liver King. That's that's true. <laughs> the Liver King, oh, sure. dude. That's dude. Bad. I was gonna almost put him in the pot. The, Topic no, no, channel. Gonna, no, go for it. It's so, podcast. it's so worth talking about. <laughs> He's, that's okay. That's so not controversial. If we, if there's anyone who thinks that's controversial, I, I don't. I, they wouldn't no. like us in the first place. No. no. For anyone who's not aware, the Liver King is this guy. He's a social media influencer who is obsessed with 
letting us know about the nine ancestral tenants out there so we can live a more primal lifestyle and it's healthier because back in the day his kids who were like 15 at the oldest oldest the liver boys if you will um as he calls them you must they are they were getting sick all the time they couldn't breathe is what he said and so they look back and they stopped eating vegetables and they started just eating raw meat and now he just walks around shirtless and in shorts and barefoot with a hat on and he just talks about how you shouldn't eat vegetables when you can eat testicles and how you should get cold every day and submerge yourself in ice water and how he'd rather have his children hate him than hate themselves so which means his kids definitely hate him i mean yeah he makes me um, brain on camera yeah, God, dude, he, he posted video. a video today of his family they have like all these pieces of like cow brain or pig brain or something in front of them he goes all right guys let's eat up and they all like toast it and they're chewing on it and he's like devouring it like he looks like he's getting pleasure from it <laughs> and you can see his his wife is like looking at him while she's eating it, like dude what the fuck that's so and like the fuck. kids are like barely chewing it like they can you can tell that they're like dad please cut the camera please, i don't know i don't please. know if i've seen his kids i've just seen his videos do his kids look malnourished they're not in them often, but they're always shirtless too. Also, if you look at Liver King's body, he's one hundred percent. He's definitely like, on roids, hundred percent. Yeah, he has definitely done a lot of roids in his time. He's he's been on. He's done at least fifteen looks, trend cycles. He looks comically large. Yeah. He looks like, like fake. He, he looks, looks like, like he has breasts. He looks like a Disney XD like villain bully like f- channel cartoon. <laughs> he looks like someone that was supposed to be in a Hercules. He looks like somebody's wearing a buff man suit. He yeah. looks like yeah. one of the old like D DC- like Batman games like Bane like buff. Yeah. He looks like he he looks like if you put a drop of water on him, it would just evaporate before you got them. <laughs> how dry and unlike no yeah, water he's drinking and everything. It's kind of nasty. It's body horror levels of oh, fit. It's it's not like he he could he could beat the shit out of me. Like there's no question about it. But that doesn't mean he's healthy. Like he his his body is gonna like just function, just shut down at some point after all of this. So no, there was the, he does this thing where he's like primals want to know where he like people primals ask him, like yeah. like he basically he you know it's like an FAQ type video and there's one where it's like it's like people want to know what Liver King's favorite workout is. It's like Liver King doesn't have favorite workouts because. All I care about is what's going to be hard for me to do that day. The only workout that I really look forward to is Saturdays because that's my super barbarian skull fucker, primal Hercules ball and cock torture gamer workout. <laughs> um, no Doritos. Like, and he just like, he's like, he's like, but other than that, you know, I just do what I think is going to be most difficult for me because that's how you get your most, like the most enjoyment out of it because you know you've accomplished something that day. So aside from the Super Barbarian Skullfucker Ball and Cock Torture Gamer Workout, no Doritos, uh, finger in a blender, uh, got my toe stuck in the uh, the garbage disposal uh, workout, uh, everything else doesn't matter. (laughs) There was, I saw a TikTok, it wasn't Liver King, but it was another, like, weird, like, nutritional guy. Uh, Was he talking about seed oils? He was talking about seed oils. Yep. Yeah, and somebody fucking stitched it and was like, imagine you're having a rough week and you're on your way home from work and your wife texts you and goes, hey, can you get some cereal for the kill for the kids? So then you walk into the grocery store and you're already pissed off and then you just try to get, get your goddamn cereal for your child and some guy's standing in the middle of the grocery store, no shoes, shirtless, yelling about seed oils. Wow. Get the fuck out of my way. No, that's what, that's what I remember he was talking about. It's just having a shit day. His boss chewed him out. It's yeah. like pouring rain. Everything's shit. The wife asks him to pick up, pick up chips and guac, and because it's Taco chips and Tuesday, guac. And that's the what only, it is. The Taco only, Tuesday. The only God-forsaken thing that's bringing you any form of serotonin, any form of joy in this life, is goddamn Taco Tuesday. You're gonna pick up the tortilla chips, and you see that freakazoid talking about seed oils while his body looks <laughs> like he could, he's lubed and greased up. How much he's sweating. You're ruining my Taco <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> just, just screaming at him in public. We've, I wish we've created we've created things that can send people to the moon, and there there are people decide to not wear shirts and wear walk around barefoot. I had a it's kind of a tangent, but I don't think it's, we're going anywhere. This whole else podcast this. is a tangent. I, that's so yeah. true, babe. <laughs> I'm we, a sea um, can guy myself. We, but. there's this guy. <laughs> there's this you. guy I went to. Um, I went to college with he. <laughs> He was, he was, like, on the spectrum with some stuff, but it was, like, very, like, high enough functioning that, like, you could tell he could control enough of it and anything he was doing was, like, 
for attention and stuff instead of like trying to make any attempt to mm-hmm. uh, do stuff. I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to word this in a way of saying he was acting kind of weird, but I don't. Not in a. I hate autistic people. He's being weird because <laughs> that's no, not what I, I'm saying. I, no, I understand I know, what you mean. I know. I know. But it was just. It, it was. So he'd have a he had a he'd have a bunch of like little things that he'd do of like some like little mannerisms and stuff and like I, I remember he'd like lay out like pencils in front of his desk like he'd have like twenty different unsharpened pencils he'd lay in front of his desk he had to like organize and stuff little 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 quirk stuff there was one thing he was doing I remember where he was walking around campus barefoot. And he and he was claiming it was like strengthen his calluses or whatever. And me, me and my friend Bella were always like checking him out. We had the same classes. We had multiple classes with him, either together or like separate. That we then like communicate and like t- snap and go like, dude, this is holy shit. And the main the main reason I bring it up is because he was doing it during then, but also just in general. But I also had an environmental art class with him, where it was an art class based around just. Using like environmental, either it being like about environmental stuff or like in, incorporating like environmental aspects of it. Like if you made something like out of plants or like took some like collage of picture of like plants or something, mm-hmm. it, it's just about or using. And what that meant is there were a lot of days where we would be outside or like using some stuff. I remember there was a day we were making these like makeshift fences for a no mo zone or something. We were just putting like stakes in the ground for as, as like a natural fence thing. And he was there. And I think he was still barefoot in the fucking dirt and the gravel to get there and everything. And he was still walking around with all... It was like rain or shine. He was still having it. All the, I, I, I don't think it was during the winter. I hope to God it wasn't. But it was It was during some time where it was like, you should not have... You should put those things away. The story is more it interesting just, if it was in the winter. Yeah. No, honestly. Just cold <laughs> I, I think gravel. It, I, I, think, I think that's what it was. It, it was the it was the earlier semester where it was... um. It was that it was it was a sophomore year, soph- no I think it was junior year because it was earlier when um when you could actually walk around that that's what it was so, be near some people there would be points we'd like see him like across the like walkway and everything and they're just like wait he's still fucking barefoot he's walking outside from class to class barefoot and I'm not a I'm not a big fitness man I'm not I don't I don't know much about musculature stuff I feel like there are better ways <laughs> of strengthening your feet. Than fucking subjecting everyone to your grippers and let the dogs go barking. Hey, just, the puppies be barking sometimes. All I'm saying is, you can be, you can do whatever you want in your own fucking time. The minute you start walking the dogs around out? campus, <laughs> the minute you start walking around campus on the carpeted floors and tile floors, and outside in Vermont natural weather where there is dirt and grass and grime and everything else, then there, there's a, there's a there's another fucking problem. No, no, no amount of showers will change that. I saw this guy on uh, on TikTok. Uh, I have two TikTok stories. I'm not addicted. I promise. I just use it once a week, and I send Lucas and Donnie an obscene amount of TikToks. Anyway, um, you send me like three at most. <laughs> yeah, well, you're well, you're you're newly uh, on TikTok for me to send you stuff. Uh, I don't go on much. Uh, whereas Lucas is, is, he's probably opened his phone and had like forty messages. I mean, I granted when I got into it, I got into it with Logan. She, she and I had a system of sending each other like about forty back and forth as anyone we'd see. But now it's kind of died down, and now that thing is just stuck with me. That's how it used. I it, sent her one about a uh, about a Jewish dating app, and then like four weeks later, she got back to me and said it was really funny. But it was yeah, just she's been, she's she was awesome like it's called Lux Club. It's funny. It, I don't think it was Lux Club. I think it was something. Lux Club. Lux but, Club's kind of lit. Um. Anyways, there was a guy on TikTok. He was from New Zealand, and he was talking all about how like you know you don't need shoes. You just got to train your feet. And he's just like you know the bo- and everyone was like. Oh, your feet must be gross. And he's like, Nah, look at them; they're fine. Like they're perfectly normal. And he was like talking about how his toes have been like, they're like more splayed out now, like a chimp, because uh, he's not conforming himself <laughs> to foot prisons. And I was like, Dude, just like, yeah, if you want to walk outside barefoot, like that's cool, man. But I hope you don't like go to the grocery store like that. I'm gonna start smashing bottles in the street. Just broken glass everywhere. I'm going to constantly pour hot tar on any walkable surface and give every single person the right 
foot pro and boots and everything to be able to traverse them. And if he says no, the, the, then he says, no, I need this from feet. I'm going to go, okay, that's fine. You need to walk in this hot tar with your fucking feet. Well, it's like, you know, when you walk a dog in the summer, you're supposed to like check the asphalt to see if it's going to burn their feet. Meanwhile, this guy's just like, yeah. Oh, just on purpose, just going, I don't need shoes. Shoes are for weaklings. Do you guys well, dual so people do it to connect with the ground. They ground themselves. Yeah. Like, that's what Liver King's thing is. Like, it's weird. you touch the ground and, like, it's grounding. Apparently, it's therapeutic. Like, there's, like... If it I works guess, for like, them, some, it works like, for them. But, like, a uh, societal I thing. I, with mean, it. I don't know. It, I mean, legitimately, it is nice having your feet in the grass, I think, for a therapeutic thing. Hippie. But that's the thing. I could leave at any moment. Yeah, but, but like, standing in the grass, like, like just, like, going outside, just, like, experience being outside for a bit and, like, being barefoot and being on the grass is a different thing no, that's than, what, like... No, that's what I was going to say, is that people have Being turned, in an art class and you just, like, aren't wearing shoes. Pe- people, people have turned a, a thing that's meant for therapeutic things to connect back with nature into a, this is a lifestyle that I have now. Yeah. We, we, we can't go back to that kind of This is of my shit. personality. And also, we have enough, like, advanced technology stuff that we don't have to go back to that. My feet are... You can make your feet strong enough, but if you were, like, climbing up a... I, I'd like to imagine any of those fucking guys have any of those and then, like, go up Mount Kearsarge where half of it is all, like, rock steps and everything <laughs> <laughs> and shit like that and just, like, see what get, splits open by the time they're well, done with it with the little chops. Do you guys remember uh, Dual Survival? Yeah. Like, co- like what was it? Was it Cody? Like, the one guy who hadn't worn shoes in, like, 10 years or something. I don't remember no that clue. part of it. I do, I do remember Dual, Sur- Dual, Dual Survivor and then also Survivor Man or whatever. There was, like, the shows on Discovery where they would just, like, be in the woods. Yeah, like, like Dual Survival, one of the guys never wore shoes. Like, he hadn't worn shoes in, like, 10 years. That's and there's so one weird. episode where they're walking through... These are total opposites. That's so that's stupid. Either a desert or a forest um, where there were, like, the little or underwater. spiky... Uh, or underwater. They're the, like the little spiky like, tree seeds on the ground. Oh, yep, yep. And uh, he, they kept sticking into his feet. And I'm like, dude, just put some fucking just, shoes just, on. Just put a sock put on. Put some shoes. So here's the thing about a lot of those people like saying, oh, yeah, like this is, the, this is my lifestyle. I don't wear shoes anymore. Here's uh, like humans evolved to wear clothing. Like that was our adaptation to our environment. That's why and most that people are adaptation. Hairy. It's that's yeah, like we don't, yeah, we don't have a lot of hair. So then to keep warm, we needed to wrap ourselves in something else, which, you know, that's, that's the, that's clothing. It was like animal pelts and whatever. And it's gone through the years and everything. And part of that was our toes are, our, our bottoms of our feet are pretty sensitive. So we put a barrier between that and the, and the ground. So I, I was watching this video and it was um, Adam Savage and he said something super duper, um cool about this exact subject which this is the last thing we'll touch on because we got to wrap it up but he said that the before you tap it up the evolutionary lineage of us wearing clothing was in part the thing that allowed us to like go to space and like explore underwater and like go to the marianas trench because you know a dog doesn't need to wear clothes because they just regulate the temperature differently and they have fur and uh, or hair and like that's how they do it whereas we needed to build these things around us so then eventually those things around us turned into fucking space suits which is just a, it was a very interesting way of looking at it which is kind of awesome because space is cool i mean that makes a lot of sense i mean like we're gonna touch on this real quickly and then we'll be done but you they're talking about the whatever being connected in nature and our ancestors and shit you can go back to like Native Americans. Even they had fucking moccasins. Right, they wore shoes. There's still like something developed like back like during that some of that time. You go back, uh, the, people just had even the like samurais or whatever fucking boards on their feet. Japanese people. There, there's a bunch of different cultures that had something strapped onto their feet. If you go back hundreds of years, but they want to go back to our primal whatever thing when we had to because we didn't have that option. Before like, we had fire. The primal thing to do if you were, the primal thing to do if you were having a fucking heart attack is just die. But we actually have medicine to, and the hospital to be able to prevent that now. Like that's just because it was primal doesn't mean it's objectively good. Like, it, you hear well, it, it, you heard like it he, here, folks. Uh, Lucas wants everyone to die. If you have a heart, if you have yeah. a heart attack, I'm gonna point and laugh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna record it. I'm gonna. Rec- You're not gonna, strong like our ancestors I'm gonna were. Record, I'm gonna record a TikTok of it and. and 
I'm gonna put every single relevant hashtag on it, and I'm gonna say this is me when I'm driving, and I'm gonna just record you while you're, you're foaming at the mouth. All right. I just want to leave us with a quote about being primal, guys. This is number four of Liver King's Ancestral Tenet's Shield. Oh, God. Us primals were once conditioned to avoid dangers. We took action to minimize risk of conflict, to our survival, to our daily well-being. Imagine now that Wi-Fi is the modern-day lion. You might not see it. You might not even sense it. But it's threatening who we are as a species. That's why shielding ourselves from danger sits at number four. Because guess what? Our dangers today may look different, but no one knows if they're less fatal. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I think I understand all those words uh, on their own. Um, but when strung together like that, I... I, I what? Mind you, this is a man who uses social media for his living right now and his posts on the internet all the time. And he's saying that Wi-Fi is what's killing us. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the type of guy that thinks COVID was started by 5G. Well, well it was, was but yeah, that's so, a different oh, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're entirely right. aware of all the things that are fatal and entirely aware of all the things that could kill us. I think. Yeah, we, like 5G like 5G, Joe Biden. Like 5G and Joe Biden, yeah. <laughs> Gas is $10, it's going to kill me. Anyway, thanks for listening to episode 40 of the Boy Podcast. We're back. I don't know, it, uh, you know, this is a revival. It's basically, it's not really a season two. We were already in season two and season three and season four and then back season to season two. Season one through 40. Um, so, yeah, we were in season one through 40. We're in the Better so, Call Saul version. We're in the prequel right now where it's yeah. still relevant to know the future information. Yeah. Yeah. So we're back. Wow. We're, we're going we're gonna to keep up with it now. And by we, I mean me. Um, because if this is, if it's in my calendar, I'm going to do it, you know. But, but it was a long time not in my calendar, and it wasn't really something right that between I was Taco about. Tuesday and brushing his teeth. Uh, not really, because it's Thursday, and you have tacos on Tuesdays, and you brush your teeth on another day. On Friday, week. yeah, no, it is between them. Yeah, you, no, you're absolutely right. Actually, yep. How did you know <sighs> when I brush my teeth for the week? You're... That's so weird. Um, but yeah, we're gonna we're we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it good. I don't know when this is. I don't know what day I'm gonna choose to for these to come out but they will come out eventually and uh thank you for listening uh dad see you later father dad Papa. lucas take us away so i don't know if this is worth doing because it's for the joke i'll do it for, you know i'll do it for the joke there it is <laughs>